Today's focus standard comes from Grade 8, Statistics and Probability, Standard 1, Investigate and Describe Patterns of Association in Bivariate Data. Our topic comes from our new unit, Data and Statistics, Classifying Scatter Plots. Our essential question today is, what vocabulary and categories do we use to classify scatter plots? Please take a moment pausing the video if you need to to make sure that you copy the standard, the topic, and the essential question in your header along with today's date, set up your question column and your note column, and resume the video when you're ready to begin. I'm going to start off today with a little bit of vocabulary. So I have three words here for our, as we begin this new unit, so that we can all be on the same page. So starting off with scatter plots, that's a type of graph used to explore the relationship between variables, aka also known as bivariate data, bi being a prefix that means two, and variate, um, notice here having the same root as variable, so to variable data. So a scatter plot is a graph that shows us the relationship between two variables or that we use to explore and I really like that added into the definition. Um, so I just have a little note here that it's important to realize that all scatter plots are graphs of bivariate data as they represent both x and y variables plotted as coordinate points x, y. So when you're looking at a point you're looking at where those two variables meet um, and so that is the beginning of exploring that relationship. So I talked about this a little bit, but bivariate data then is numerical information collected on two variables. And association is essentially just a synonym that we're going to use for the word relationship when describing bivariate data. So those are our three new vocabulary terms, um, scatter plots, bivariate data, and association. Please take a moment to make sure that your vocab is all copied in to your notes before moving on. When classifying scatter plots, we essentially have three questions to ask ourselves. The first question we're going to ask ourselves is, is it linear or nonlinear association? So here we see that word again and remember association is basically just another word for relationship. So here I have some examples. These would be scatter plots that are linear, although the points aren't all directly in one line. They do kind of form a line, so we would say they have linear association. These two graphs over here on the right side, you notice this one is more of like an upside down U shape, so it's got a little curve here. This one starts off in the middle of our, about the bottom third of our y-axis and then curves up. So we're, we again, it has a curve to it, although all the data is kind of close together, um, it creates an association or relationship that looks non-linear. The second question that we're going to ask ourselves is, is it positive or negative association? So you just keep asking yourselves these things and um, I'll talk about that, this at the end. So here I have positive association. Um, so here's our nonlinear, it's actually this nonlinear one here. But because it's going upward and it's increasing as we read the graph from left to right, it's nonlinear positive association. Here, I took one of the graphs of our linear. Again, it's increasing, although not with a curve, but it is increasing as we read our graph from left to right. So this example is an example of linear positive association. The negative association here, because we see that it goes downward as we read the graph from left to right, we have a nonlinear negative association. Here, it's a linear association, but it is going downward as we read it from left to right, so it's a linear negative association. And our final question that we ask is, is it a strong or weak association? So 
That has to do with when we actually start putting a trend line or a trend curve onto our graph. So I've done that in red here. How closely do the points fall on that trend line or trend curve? Here, although we have some points that are not fall, um, that are not directly on this line, they're all pretty close. And so we would say that this has strong association. On this curve, almost this curve hits almost every single one of our data points, at least on the edge of it. And so this has very strong nonlinear positive association. So strongness has to do with how closely the points fall to the trend line or curve. Here we have one that's a little bit weaker. It was hard to find a place to put a line here on this set of data that would touch even two of the data points. We ideally like it to touch two, um, but it doesn't have to. But um, notice it doesn't touch any, and so the further it is away from the trend line or the trend curve, the weaker the association. And then, as you kind of heard me say before, we're going to start using all, we then start using all of the words that we from these questions that we were asking ourselves to describe the graph. So if I was to look at this one right here, so if I was to be looking at this graph right here that I just put the purple circle around, then I could say that it's linear positive weak association. Linear because it does seem to form a line in the general shape of a line. It's positive because it's increasing as I read the graph from left to right. It's increasing, it's going up. But though it's weak because the points don't fall all that close to this line. There's a lot of points that are spacing away. So I would say it's a weaker association. So you can use all three words, linear, positive, weak, association, to describe the relationship of these x, y values here. And then lastly, you are going to run across some graphs that don't have any association. They truly are a scatter plot. Points seem to be scattered all over. Um, and so it becomes harder to decide if there's a correlation there or not. Correlation is another word you might hear us use instead of association. So there are <clears throat> occasionally graphs where you look at the x and y variables and you plot it out it's all over the place and there we would say it has no association and we'd say there's really no relationship between those two variables. All right so that concludes our video. I ran out of space here but please 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 be sure to write a summary. I'm just going to write the words here. Oops. Please write a summary for this video and make sure that your notes are fully complete and that you're ready to practice this when we get back to class.